Uh, okay, uh, Kate, do you have another speaker lined up for me? Yeah, we've got Tony Hansen in the room. Uh, Tony, can you hear me? Tony, Tony. Hey guys, do you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Okay, I want you awesome. to get your uh, PowerPoint up there and I'll uh, give you your introduction. Tony Hansen is one of the most respected technical analysts and traders in the industry with a high reputation for accuracy in both bull and bear markets. A pioneer to electronic trading, Tony has over two decades of experience in trading stocks, futures, options, and Forex. Uh, so uh, the way this works, uh, Tony, is you have until five minutes before the hour, uh, and then we'll give away the last of our prizes for the day, which will take our two-day total up to uh, $66,000 on the week. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. Uh, you have the floor. Where are you broadcasting from today? All right, thank you. I am in lovely, balmy Tucson. <laughs> oh, I must be cooking there. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> Yeah, you could definitely my, uh, fry your eggs on the uh, sidewalk right now. <laughs> yeah, my son went to the uh, uh, University of Arizona there, and uh, oh wow, uh, yeah, got his car stolen. Happens Sounds a lot. About right. Tucson, I heard. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's definitely gotten a, a lot more of a bad reputation over the last couple of the years here with the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, well, uh, I'm going to mute myself, and uh, the show is yours. All right. Well, thank you for that lovely introduction there. Um, as you mentioned, I've been trading for over two decades. I actually started in the mid-1990s, so we're going on over 25 years now. And I got my start as a stock trader, a swing trader, and uh, just over the years kind of merged into pretty much every market under the sun. These days, I do primarily trade futures simply because that is what works the best with the time zone I'm in and my time constraints these days. So when I was trading stocks a lot more, I loved playing opening gaps, morning movers, things like that. But now I like to come in when things are, are kind of calming down a little bit more. I've got my kid off to school, that sort of thing. The great thing about being a technical analyst and a trader is that it doesn't really mar matter what market I'm focusing upon. Right now, for example, we, we've just had a, a buy trigger as a scalp on our futures. And as we we're heading into our session, I put in a few trades, right? 15 minutes before we got started. What I like to show traders is that I'm not just teaching you how to trade, I'm also showing you live, using live market analysis, live trades. So you're not seeing things that have happened after the fact, but as they're actually unfolding. So what we're gonna talk about today is how we can avoid traps in the market and basically circumstances where a trap is more likely versus when it is less likely. So for right now, for example, we're dealing with more of a scalpish type of market. Risk is a bit higher again. If you're looking at yesterday afternoon, uh, I issued a major buy setup coming off of the lows where I was expecting a good run into today, but it was limited. It wasn't a full market reversal. We were just looking for a strong bounce back into some levels that we've seen a couple of days ago. And I'm going to show you uh, the charts of those as we progress. But the concepts that I'm going to teach you in today's session, they focus on examples of trades where I've given this particular topic a number of times over the course of the last year or so. And each time I pull examples from trades or markets that are happening right as I'm doing the class. So what you're going to see are examples from the past and how those apply in today's market and how we're seeing the exact same strategies working out today as they've done every single other time 
that I've given this session. So when we talk about avoiding traps, first of all, what does a trap mean? And how, how can we basically name that term? So when I'm thinking of a trap, what I'm talking about is a situation where we're either too early and get flushed out of a position only for it to go and take off just like we were expecting or we got into something went in our direction maybe just a couple of ticks or a few minutes or you know a very short period of time compared to what we were wanting and then flipped and reversed uh, it can also happen where you're too late and you're entering a position where there really just isn't enough potential left on it. So the main thing that I look at when we're talking about how to avoid a trap is time development. This is a key feature in technical analysis that a lot of traders completely overlook. For example, if you go and look up, just type into Google how to trade a head and shoulders pattern, technical pattern. Well, they're not going to mention time development at all. The uh, initial articles that come up are in like Investopedia and such. They, they don't tell you anything. In fact, if you go through that article and you trade exactly based upon the strategy is laid out in there, you're in huge trouble, you guys, because it, it, it's a crap shot when you're using those parameters. So how can we use time development to actually improve our odds on strategies like these, like the head and shoulders or inverse head and shoulders, bull flags, spare flags, uh, every other type of similar pattern under the sun, like cup with handles. These are all core technical strategies that most traders have heard about at some point in their trading career. So time development is really looking at how long it takes these strategies to form and develop. Where do they take place in larger trends development? And is it too early? Is it too late? What technical tools can we use to identify if that is true or not? So the first type of time development focuses on comparable periods of time correction following impulse moves. So if we're looking at this example here, this is uh, from a class I gave back in April. What you'll notice is that we've got these very similar periods of congestion or correction happening, where after it's put in about that same amount of time, we start to get the impulse moves coming into play. This is one that we traded at that time as well. And what this shows us is that we're looking at things like bull flags or bear flags or these zones of congestion as a trend has reversed. How long do we need that zone of congestion to form in order to have this highest probability of a strong impulse or momentum of coming out of that congestion? So in this case, we can go back and we can look at this impulse move here, or trend move on the downside, it's a nice three wave trend move. We call this a, a Slytherin trend because it kind of starts out a little slow, gains speed, then shifts again. Integral signal in mathematics is another way that we'll look at this. And if you look at that compared to, you know, similar size and similar momentum moves in the past, you can get an idea for what a typical period of time correction is. So if we were to look at the Dow right now, for example. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of grab a screenshot here to show you this. One second, because we're actually having this unfold right now and show you what this looks like. So hold on right here. I'm going to pull this up. So if we're looking at the Dow right now, this is actually the, the micro. Clear this, make this a little bit bigger. This is the buy setup that I was talking about right smack 
as we were starting class. I actually had some a little bit earlier too that I'll touch upon as well. But look at this zone of congestion here coming up after our impulse move. If we look at where we've had, you know, similar impulse move in the past, similar zone of congestion or correction, then that tells us, hey, you know what, this is a good potential level where we could get another impulse move coming in and play. So this technically triggered a setup for buy right in here. Again, I mentioned it right as we were going into a session. And we're going to look at other reasons that this was a buy as well. Another type of time development I want you to keep in mind, because we're going to come back to this chart here. Actually, a couple different types of time development we will come back to. And if we weren't in session right now, I would be in this trade as well as the one that I placed earlier. But sadly, now I just have a little bit of what I had left over from the earlier reversal. So let me switch this chant, this uh, image over. I'm going to show you some other examples. So here's another one. Now, when we're talking about our time development, again, very comparable periods of congestion. So if you're looking at head and shoulders pattern, it's really great if our shoulder has about the same amount of time for development as we saw on the left shoulder. Notice that that inverse head and shoulders that we were looking at on the Dow just now had that similar time development. Now, there also are going to be cases where we need to think of these zones as being fractal in nature. So in trend development, we often see trends move in waves of two or three, meaning like three primary downtrend moves or two primary downtrend moves. Here's three on the upside. What you'll notice, though, is that sometimes we get these periods of congestion that are half the prior zones of congestion. In those situations, we can be more likely to get three waves versus two. But if we think of this trend development, we could think of this as wave one, this is wave two, and this is our two wave correction in here. Because other ways that this trend will play out is it will look like this. It will look like this, where the correction is more tilted here in the middle. This correction has you know, those two ways of congestion like this. So on the way back down, we might have periods where they're half. So it's like this and this can be equal on the way back down. So if we think in terms of our zones of congestion as being different fractions of congestion, that can really help us out as uh, we're looking at zones where traps are more likely. So for example, this coming up here, going into a zone of congestion, that's only half of a lot of these previous zones of congestion that we've seen. Well, you could get a false breakout here, a base that goes and doubles that zone of congestion, and then continues where this whole aspect ratio is comparable to these. So when we're looking at, hey, am I going to buy this here? I might buy it still, but I'm going to be looking at potential risk involved. If it doesn't put in a strong enough momentum move coming out of that, what are the different ways that this could continue to develop and form and give us more bullish action coming out of this? Now, since this overall channel here is more gradual, Ideally, we would want this uptrend channel to come in and bring in a lot more momentum. In the best case scenarios, it's going to be even stronger. You'll see it come up to about here before you would get any, any sort of pause. We call this a T3 uh, target zone. I'm not going to get into those here today, but uh, that's what we would be looking at. So let's look at a couple of other examples here. So two equals one leads to further selling. Three breakdowns, bit too early struggles to gain momentum. See how this is breaking down a little bit too early. So this means that this is more likely to create a trap. So what happens is it ends up doubling before we get a nice two wave confirmation on the continuation here. 
Now that brings us into here today. So this was one of my first trades this morning and this was coming off of our lows. So I actually started watching for this setup yesterday and we've been tracking it really all week here this week. We've been looking at this move on the downside and the momentum shift that was taking place in here. And what you can see on this 500 tick of the Dow is that we have these very similar zones of correction time periods. So the first one, we have a nice little two-wave correction. This creates a pattern called an avalanche. Then we have two congestions here where we get three lows coming in. So the corrective periods are about the same, but the overall momentum is again starting to shift even further here. This is called a momentum reversal. And what I'm looking at here is going to be something that we'll talk about later too as well. Look at the time distance between these lows. We're going to come back to this because I want this pivot high here to be before my 61.8% price extension in order to have a bullish bias. The blue is the 61.8. On NinjaTrader, it shows as 161.8, but most of your platforms are going to be 61.8. So that triggered yesterday into the close. So on that move, I took off a lot of the position here um, as we're coming into the upper end of the channel, but this morning, we've got our continuation. And again, look at how long each of these zones of congestion are forming. So you have your range here. We've got this tilted check mark in here, goes to a nice measured move, that T3 target zone in here. So this created that first initial move off of that low here as we're coming into today's session. Now coming back down, we started to see a little bit of choppiness with regard to our news that's coming out today. But look again at this time development for this congestion. So following our main impulse move down, it's the exact same amount for our time congestion. So this told me, hey, you know what? We're looking at a retest coming back down into those lows. Now my overall bias here was still more bullish, but it gave us a good resist, a good um, pullback zone to flush back down into before we could get another turnaround starting to try to come in. Now let's look at our second type of time development. And we saw this a little bit on that previous chart and I'm gonna come back to that. But our second type of time development is not just looking at those zones of congestion or the corrections, but it's also looking at how long we have within those zones of congestion or correction before we have a greater probability of the trend continuing. So if you're looking at a two-way correction, in this case, the pattern is called a shallow avalanche. What we would wanna see again, this is that 61.8% time extension. The pivot, happens at 50%. Ideally, on the bearish side, what did I just say we would prefer to see happening? We would want it at that 61.8 or after to have a more bearish focus. So what this meant was, hey, this time development up here, not perfect, but when that happens, when it's at 50%, that means the only way to get a good solid continuation on the downside is if that's the head of a head and shoulders in here. And then our right shoulder would need to be close to about that 100% extension. So what we're looking for now between the distance between the lows is that A and B, when it breaks down, are right about the same. So a little bit of a con with the earlier pivot, but it makes up for it or negates the con by forming a head and shoulders. And that's the only way that we start to have lower risk again 
on the breakdown. So any pivot high here that is ahead of that 61.8% is going to be more bullish unless it develops into a smaller head and shoulders. All right, so if it's at 61.8 or later, bearish, you're looking at continuation on the downside. That brings us to today. So here is today's action. Once again, we have that two wave correction. Notice this time though, our pivot. We've got news action coming into here. So it's giving us a little bit of an extreme pop, comes right into that T3 breakdown zone here. So that's that target zone for resistance. But it has that ideal time development. In this case, we also do have a bit of that head and shoulders formation too, but we also have that positive later pivot high. So that as this is breaking, it's confirming coming into that one to one ratio here. So this is our second zone of time development. So if you're looking at how long this is forming, we also want to look at some of those previous periods of congestion or correction as well. So you've got both of those coming into play here. Here's another example. And this is a great one. I pulled this one up because I wanted to show you what can happen when the breakdown is too early. So this is one that um, I was trading. I was looking for continuations on the downside. This looks a little bit more like what we saw here today. But you know, very similar retracement back into, again, a bigger T3 zone. T3 is basically where your channel breaks. And then you get a retracement back down into that channel break zone. That's what that T3 zone is. So I was looking for continuation on the downside. But when it broke right here, it's too early. It's only at about halfway. So if you had placed a stop above here, you would have gotten flushed out. Hence, trapped. Trapped short, trapped long. If you bought above the previous high as a breakout, and flushed if you had your stop above that previous high. The reason being, your time development is totally off. So much higher risk that not only could it be a trap, but even if it does try to continue at that point, it's more likely to be stunted compared to your previous impulse moves down. So if you're looking for a really nice continuation where you're looking for that measured move, would like what ended up happening here, you would be more likely that even if this did have a nice little push through it, it's not going to get that equal move. It's going to be smaller. Here's another way that we can look at our time development here. And in this case, we're looking at distances between highs or lows. So that buy setups that we were having coming in here earlier today, they were using similar strategies to this. I was looking at distancing between lows to help initiate buy triggers. And when we have patterns like a head and shoulders, ideally we want our left shoulder and right shoulder to be equally spaced between that head. You can also have you know, the distance of your shoulder over here being comparable. In this case, it broke too early right here. So we get a retest. So the zone for the left shoulder needs to include our retest zone. If this went out further into a longer base, this is our maximum zone. We would use this as our maximum shoulder. So you could also do time development from here to here and over. So if this comes up and we notice that, hmm, you know, momentum's picked up a little bit more. It's kind of pulled up a little bit more over there. There's the potential that this could do a right shoulder over here too. 
before we would get the continuation. When I look at head and shoulders patterns or inverse head and shoulders patterns, I'm usually looking at two sets of shoulder pivots because this type of scenario is very common. When you come up, you'll get your initial pivot, you'll get a secondary one, your left shoulder can have a two wave correction, you'll get your high. So your spacing here to here to here can be equal, but then you can also have equal spacing like that as well. So you can get a shoulder here, shoulder here, head, shoulder, shoulder. Very, very, very common, you guys. You're going to see that over and over again in the markets. So that's usually how I'm approaching these. Um, here is another example where we had it over and over and over again. Again, this was a day where we were looking at some of the reversal patterns and probabilities coming off of our lows in the day. We had going into congestion, pullback, slightly lower low, coming up, range, shoulder, even spacing between the lows. Coming over here, starts to shift momentum here, little head, shift again, continuation on the upside. Notice the zone of congestion here is very similar to some of the previous zones of congestion as well in terms of how long that time development is. Over here, we're in a bull flag, but we still get that nice spacing between the lows for the continuation. If you look here, you can see even, although this is tilted on the downside, you get your even spacing between these lows for the breakdown for that avalanche over here. Same thing here on the move up, your high here to here to where your breakout's confirming, very similar distancing between those highs. So this goes back to our previous example of time development as well. Now, this brings us to the fourth type of time development. And this is one where I rely upon an indicator. The only indicators I use in my trading anymore are Fibonacci and sometimes volume as well. Uh, that's it, you guys. I started with um, moving averages, simple and exponential moving averages. At one point, I would use things like a CCI or MACD, but what I found was over time, I stopped paying much attention to them because paying more attention to the core price and time development action was giving me much greater confirmation and a lot greater success on the trades. Fewer false signals. It was just so much easier to read the price action without a lot of things cluttering up my charts. So you'll see pretty naked charts when I'm showing you um, what I'm trading. So our fourth type of time development, though, it relies upon Fibonacci fans. So we've saw some Fibonacci time extensions, but this one has the Fibonacci fans. And you can also see I've got a Fibonacci retracement put on here. I want you to look at this really closely here. See how this is going from our low to our high here. And it might not look like it's hooked up purely on the line chart. It is on the candlestick chart. And the retracement levels, this is 50%. This is from my trading computer, 61.8, 76.4, 100%. One twenty three point six. Pay attention to that one twenty three point six percent, because as we go and look at the move that came off of our lows here, just into today, that's the target level that I used. And earlier this week, when I was taking buy setups, um, I was very explicit in my trading channel that these were going to be scalps, and there was a higher chance that overall we were looking at a further downside into the 123% retracement on the ES. That was my larger downtrend target. That is exactly what hit and held 
Here it is right here. And we talked about this extensively over the last two trading days. So look at that. Not exactly the same pattern, but exactly the same reason looking at support levels. So here, this is an avalanche. Again, ideally, this pivot would be at 61.8% time extension from here to here. If it is earlier than that, closer to 50%, we would be looking for a smaller head and shoulders to get the continuation to go. Look at over here. This is a little bit shallower. And on this time frame, you'll notice that it doesn't have that even spacing. What's the difference? The difference is that this is a tick chart and this is a time frame chart. So ideally, our time frame chart is going to have that same spacing on it. The points where you can get earlier or later breaks, if it is at the halfway point, it can do an earlier break. So on the ES, that was at the halfway point. On the tick charts, on the time frame charts, this breakdown has great time development. Perfect. So nice, nice breakdown here. We are seeing our first break in the channel here. So I was looking for this to break lower. And my goal was that 123.6%, which is the same level that's right here. Similar upward move. You got kind of a slower start, more extreme. This one doesn't really shift as momentum as much over here before it stops. But just another variation of the same pattern, you guys. So ideally, what you would also notice in terms of volume is you would have a volume drop in here. We're not going into volume much today, but that's what you would normally expect to see at this point there. So our Fibonacci fans can be another tool to help us with time development. They're not always going to work like here. This pulled up more, but it came into the T3 resistance level. In a Fibonacci fan, we're going to use a fan if this move on the downside here is average to slightly stronger than average momentum. That means if this is pretty much straight down like over here, a Fib fan from that high to that low is not going to be useful. What we instead uh, watch for pivots on the way back up to make adjustments on our Fib fan. There's very technical reasons that we will use for how to make adjustments on the Fib fan. I'm not going to go into those here today. I want to keep things really simple for you guys. So if your pullback is an average to slightly stronger than average momentum move, you're going to go from your high to your low. What we want to see now is that on the initial bounce, if this is a stronger than average initial bounce here, if it pulls up about halfway or more off of that low before it stalls, we want that low to line up with approximately that 61.8%. If the bounce pops and it slows and pulls back lower, then we would hook that up to the 50%. That's where we would want to see it holding. When we do that, it allows the 76.4% fan to be really strong resistance. So in this case, we would be looking not only for that fan as a resistance zone to tell us, hey, you know, this congestion is spaced out long enough. There's actually um, another type of time development as well. Um, I didn't put it into this slide, but if you look at how long, the, or this presentation, but if you look at how long this drop took to form, this correction, needs to be at least the same amount of time. So you want at least a one to one ratio or a one to two ratio for the breakdown. So that's a fifth type of time development that um, wasn't even originally covered here in our session, but it is something else to watch for. So we start to get everything kind of lining up in favor for that breakdown here at the end of last year. And it's the same type of stuff that we saw leading for the breakdown here uh, today and this morning that we saw right in um, the Dow this morning as well.
also look at our time development again. Here's the time development. So you're seeing how A and B are really, really similar when that breaks down. And again, if you put your fib timing extensions on it, this pivot high should be at or after 61.8 in order to get a really strong breakdown. If it is at 50%, then you're going to be looking for potential timing for head and shoulders. But you would have to get that additional shift in momentum. Here's another example. This was using the Aussie dollar. So this example came about because um, I didn't place, I don't believe I placed the trade in the Aussie dollar. I was placing it in the futures market most likely. But what um, is interesting about the Aussie dollar is that it is a great source to follow if you're a futures trader because it can often give you signals that are earlier than you would otherwise anticipate in the overall indices and give you confirmation on the setups that you're following. So if you've got your Aussie dollar in your favor, you're looking at a pretty good shot of a nice strong setup. So for example, going into today, the Aussie dollar was retesting previous lows. Perfect support level on uh, that Aussie dollar here. Let me see, I believe I actually have it in the background of my chart. Right here, yeah, look at this. Right here, so I always keep this up. So you can see that coming right off of that low here today as a major support level. Also notice our time development, you guys. Look at how each of these is about that same amount of time here on those moves. So we also have that timing between the head and shoulders here leading to that breakdown. You've got your nice measured movements on the way up, nice volume spiking down here. And then here was that double tap of that low. So this helped me have confirmation with um, coming off of these lows here yesterday. So Aussie dollar, great tool to use. Sometimes I still trade them. I, I don't trade them as much as I used to. But that's not because they don't trade as well as they used to. It's just that I've got my charts um, filled with uh, the futures markets instead for the most part. But you'll notice, again, 76.4% is our Fibonacci fan zone when we're going from our high to our low here. We like to see this hit 61.8% or so if it's about a 50% retracement. If it's still strong but is less, then we would have want it to hook up to 50%. If you look at the time correction over here, compare that to the overall time correction here, notice it's very similar. So that's also supporting a breakdown. What's interesting on this chart here too, you guys, is look at this move on the way up. See how we have a counter trend move right here. Very comparable time development as what happens right here and right here. So this technically looks like it would be a good Phoenix buy setup. If you look at our time development here, you're right at one to one. So it could easily go to two to one before it continues. So it pops up a little bit, doesn't offer the full confirmation, but then it goes into another base. So right here, this base compared to this base, if this was going to have a reversal, that's your do or die point right there. So it should either soar and take off. It was it's going to be a bullish move, in which case we would expect volume to be dropping during each of these congestions as well. We would typically have a bigger volume spike over here than we would have here, and that would fuel buying. But also this zone of congestion for the bulls would more often be up here where you would get your two wave correction. So the trend placement is suspect because it's lower. I'm not gonna get into that much here today, but that's another con here. So 
that time development though, it helps us nail down exactly where we would need that impulse move to trigger. So the fact that that then breaks that channel here comes right off that 76.4%, right with that time development, slower overall uptrend channel than downtrend channel, you've got the beautiful breakdown setup that also took the overall indices with it as well. Here's another example where our FIB fans come into play and create these zones of traps. So we're looking at, again, movement coming off of the lows, comes into that T3 resistance from this channel breakdown. Stronger momentum, though, than over here. So potential that, hey, this could go and, and give us a buy setup. We have an initial correction here. It's similar to some of the little shorter corrections, but doesn't pull back into the fib fan and the pullback time development is too short too short so i was looking for the possibility of it to do a secondary correction here so that we could get that longer base forming even spacing between those lows there and get a buy setup over here look what happens though pulls back breaks the 76.4 percent fan that should have held, that fan then becomes resistance. And so we don't get any setup here. This one we know is too early because B is too short. We have improper time development between our lows, tries to break way too early. And the congestion time over here is a little bit too short as well. There was an other correction, congestion back here also. So all of those mean, hey, more likelihood that this is going to cause a trap here. And if it doesn't, we would be looking for another setup coming off of that 76.4% fit fan or a base into that time development here. So this is a great example of how looking at that time development can trigger earlier setups. Now, here's another example. So in this one, again, I was looking at inverse head and shoulders. This came up smaller T3 zone. My space has the shorter base here, which is about the same size. So it didn't hit the 76.4% fan and the timing between the lows is not right. Again, pullback timing overall equal or less than the upside and the distance between the lows, it's too soon. More likely to trap. So then we get that time development. Here is your 76.4% fib fan. Looks great. Ideally, you would want time development here. But there was larger bearish bias on larger time frames. Can't see it on this time frame, but the larger time frames had a greater bearish bias. So what happened here is that we should have immediately seen this take off at this point, should have soared, should have gone into one, two, three, all the way up into this bigger T3 zone where that channel is breaking down. So our time development means that our original stops would be under this low here. As this is moving higher, because it can't offer the confirmation at the time development point that it should have and is hugging, that fib fan, that break of that fib fan not only can give you a stop that's going to help protect some of your, your position, but it can also flip the trade because it means that now this becomes a bear flag or an avalanche as opposed to the small little phoenix here. So momentum on the confirmation is also very important, you guys. And you can see how the fan comes in as a resistance level to help us out as well. So since this was hitting so slowly, I used that to bail on the entire position. I didn't flip it immediately. I wanted to make sure we got the confirmation for the breakdown to happen, but that led to me flipping the position on the downside. And again, at that time, our larger timeframes were more bearish. So that did help me be more aggressive with that.
Same thing that we saw earlier this week too. I was taking similar setups like this, but I was taking tighter targets than I would have used had it already been at that 123.6% retracement that I told you about that we've been following. So here again, our Aussie dollar discussion, kind of got my slides out of order there, but look at today. So today, what we have is here's where that Fed fan would be on here. Now, in this case, the original 76.4% Fed fan is not really helping us out too much because we've got an extreme momentum pop in here with the news. That zone was still one that I had on here, but then when that zone doesn't hold, my next zone is the T3 level. That's my next zone that I look for for resistance to lead to reversals. So overall downside momentum here much stronger than on the upside. So at this point, this helped with flipping the bias in the morning, leading to the correction that we saw coming off of those highs. But look at our segmented time development. So similar amount of time on each of these corrections. We saw that this was at or after that 61.8%. Fibonacci time extension, and the distance between those lows is the same. But not only that, but notice how the Fib fans also help serve as support and resistance again after they break. So once you get the breakdown, those fan levels on the downside there, they're going to serve as support levels that you can help use for timing targets. So not just for the breakdown itself where here you can see that that fan zone is holding on the retest. Again, we ended up with a, a smaller head and shoulders here, but also on the retest over here, which was measured move right here to here too. So we had another type of um, price resistance at that level as well. So great example of all of those here working together with this trade. Now I want to show you our trades here as um, we're kind of finishing up and going into our, our session. So here, this was again that breakdown. Um, this is our Fib fan on that ES on our larger time frame here from uh, our session today. So the original Fib fan here on the 60 that or 6,000 tick chart. Here's the retest, here's the retest again. So basically we've got like a tilted head and shoulders right here. And look at how the 61.8% price retracement is corresponding to our Fib fan level. Same thing here, comes into 50% Fib fan, 38.2% Fib retracement. 76.4% Fib retracement, 61.8% Fib fan. So a lot of times we get those convergence levels too. 23.6% Fib retracement level, also the 76.4% Fib fan. So this was my target zone on the downside. I didn't get that full move there. I had my target on the books as it was coming into that support level. So it was also another T3 zone from the channel break over here. So I took that trade as it was going into that target level and actually flipped it, which brings us to the setup that was happening right before we started our class. So look at this one. What do we have as far as our time development aspects? Well, if we look at where the momentum shifted here and broke that channel, we take our time development that low to this low and over, we're coming into that. 100% time extension. My maximum zones, this is 123.6 right here. This is 138.2. That's where I want to have the buying confirming with the stronger momentum. The reason I've got this exit here is because if you look at the momentum, it's too slow. It's taking too long to confirm. So we had that break, but if you look at this left um, shoulder over here and then compare the right shoulder, Right shoulder here is about the same amount of time. If we double it, we have about that time development here. So the shoulder ratio is a little bit off. 
that means our fib, our, sorry, our um, right shoulder is a little bit lower than I would want it to be for a stronger bullish move. I would want it to be up here, ideally, coming into around the T3 zone right here to form. So what I did on this was I was aiming for this congestion, watching the congestion over there, looking at this breakdown zone as a target level, and then watching the momentum up into it. Originally, I had uh, my exit going into the fib fan here, but because of the momentum, I only took partials off and then took the rest when we had the 2T uh, reversal here. So this was the setup that formed right as we were heading into our session. Just a nice little scalp, but it brought into focus some of the things that we were looking at. Now, notice my fib fan. I don't have my fib fan going from that low to this high. That was originally where my fan was, but this pullback was stronger and pulled back more than 50%. So remember what I said? I said, I want that to line up with the 61.8 fib fan. So since it didn't, when I put my fan from here to here, I adjusted my fan level down to the point that it did. That gave me the new target level for the pivot. There's also a 2B reversal pattern with a little baby inverse head and shoulders there. So like I said, you know, these fan levels, even when they're not perfect to begin with, there are technical ways to shift your fans so that you have very specific reasons for doing that. It's not on a whim. You have very specific core reasons. Let me show you guys quick um, that setup here on the uh, Dow that we were just following as we were going into class again. So here is our Dow and I had a 50 tick chart up. So we will put that up on here. I'm gonna change this over to 50 tick. So here's the setup right here. This is the buy setup that I was talking about right smack as our class was getting started. I said, hey, we, you know, we're going into another buy setup here. So what you'll notice is that with our um, development, here we have a couple of examples of zones of congestion. This is basically double that. With our FIB fans, If we go from our high, our low to our high there, take a look at that. That timing is perfect, spot on. Here's where we're running into trouble though. This move should have taken off because this is an average momentum move, slower than average pullback. Check out the spacing there from that inverse head and shoulders, exactly like we talked about. But when you connect these two lows and look at our channel, our channel is shifting. This should have soared. This 61.8% retracement should have hit quickly over here if it was going to go into a secondary base and offer a nice continuation easier, more easily. Because it hugged along here, it still meant that we could have that secondary correction, but it now meant that we would have to look at this entire move with this high for the FIB fan over to this high to allow for that doubling out to give it another shot. So on a bigger time frame, I'm gonna kind of back this up so you can see the larger inverse head and shoulders. Here's your timing on that. We've got the time extension from here to here and over. So that's perfect timing right there. It doesn't get going. This is where I use advanced trade management. So that channel would end up taking me out of the trade, still with gains, but because of the time development, I'd be able to completely nail that entry point. I would, be, would not be waiting for channel breaks on the larger time frame for an entry point. I would be using the slower channel over here to add to it, but I would need that confirmation with strong buying by the 238.2 or 138.2% 2 
time extension. That should be soaring. If that doesn't soar, then how I manage that trade is that channel break would exit me out of the rest of the trade. And if I still like the larger time frames, I'd be waiting for another entry later on, which is what we have trying again here. So I hope you guys learned a ton in today's session. I've only got a couple of minutes to give you my little promo spiel. But if you liked what you learned here today, I am going to be doing a two-day live mentoring program at the end of this month, just a week and a half away, where on Saturday and Sunday, I'm taking a couple of hours each day to go through all six of my core trading strategies. These are gonna be the ones that encompass about 90% of the trades that I take. I'm gonna give you templates for each of those trades. I'm gonna show you how to use the tools that we talked about or I talked about here in today's session. You'll get to see examples taken live throughout the week. I teach um, a live session every single day at noon. It's called League of Traders. And you'll get to see how we've really been able to nail all of these moves. One of my traders, Scott, he, he mentioned um, the other day, he was looking for a trading room where they trade mostly gaps because he trades stocks and gaps. And I don't do that as much anymore. So he can't rely on me for helping him scan with that. And he's tried out a number of rooms and he's like, wow, their entries are so much later than yours. Their returns are so much less compared to what their risk is and their accuracy is so much less. That's because I've taught him how to look at the details within the patterns, not looking at the pattern as a big picture, like a snapshot, but looking at it more the way an artist does when they're constructing a drawing, a real life drawing, they're looking at different aspects and different traits. They're not taking a snapshot picture and posting it. They're looking at, hey, how do these relationships form? How do, how do they change and shift to create stronger patterns, weaker patterns? What's the core pattern? So on the 25th and 26th at 3 p.m. Eastern, I put it in the afternoon because lots of folks have their kids' games and stuff in the mornings, um, church, that sort of engagements as well. And uh, I want it, as many people can be there live as possible. And it is going to be a very thorough class. You're going to walk away with templates for each of those six trading strategies. And we're going to go through a number of examples, um, all taken from recent trade action, and show you how They've held up over time, over 25 years, you guys. Um, you also have access to uh, my League of Traders forum where you can ask me questions. You can say, hey, you know what, Tony, I'm, I'm looking at this pattern. It, it looks like this core setup that you taught me in class. How would you rate it? You know, what would you think in terms of the pros and cons? And it gives me a chance to offer input on their trades. And if they take something that doesn't work out, then I, I can help show them, hey, these are the things that increase the risk on that trade. Or if the trade went further than they were anticipating, these were the things that helped it go further. So recordings, instant access. I always talk with all of my traders. So I know some people offer like, you know, free private mentoring sessions. If you want me to call you, I'll give you a call if you signed up for the class, okay? You don't have to like, sign up for anything ahead of time. If it's a year down the road and you want to talk to me about this class, send me an email and we'll schedule a session and uh, I'll put my time in to, to help you guys out. So I want to thank you again, everyone, for having me here today. And uh, I hope you've got a lot of really great details that you can go and apply to your trading. And uh, I'll see you around. All right, Tony, thank you very much. That was You're outstanding. Very welcome. Um, it's amazing how much the technicals affect short term trading. I know. Um, it was voodoo back when we started, right? <laughs> right. I know. It was magic. Yes. Uh, so, to take advantage of Tony's offer, just click in the chat box on the right, tonyhanson.com. That'll take you to our dedicated sales page. Tony, thank you uh, very much for joining us and love to have you back again. Thanks again. Take care, everyone.